अत्रपी भारतंग श्रेष्ठंग जम्बूद्वीपे महामुने यतो ही कर्म भूरेशा यतो अन्या भोग भूमे यह अत्र जनम सहस्त्रनंग सहस्त्रे अपि सत्तम कदाचित भटे जंतुर मनुष्य पुण्य संचयत These words have been taken from the Vishnu Puran and they mean that Bharat is the greatest land on earth and it alone is the land of action while the rest are lands of pleasure. It is only after great acquisition of merit that a person gets the privilege of being born in this country. Good afternoon everyone. The Vishnu Puran talks of India as being the land of action. And just to be born in this country, you need to achieve a certain merit. But what makes the India of today the land of action? Apart from the myriad contributing factors, one important contribution is of no doubt the civil services. Right from distributing ration to the public, to controlling riots and maintaining law and order, to designing the policy framework for the government, the civil services has been what Sardar Vallabhai Patel had rightly called it, the steel frame of this great nation. My bio says that I was selected for the state civil services at the age of 22 years. Got selected twice, cleared MPPSC two times, got selected as deputy collector and people were baffled. How did you do it? What, how many books did you use to read? How many hours did you use to study? Which pen you used in the examination? What brand of atta did you use to eat? Of course, I answered them all. But gradually, as the dust settled, and I pondered deeper, and I asked myself, how did I really get here? And the answer came, it was because of the choices that were made. And that, my dear friends, is what I'm going to be speaking about today. The art of making choices. I'm going to share with you all a three-step strategy that will help you make any choice in life and stick by it. But before I delve into the strategy, I would like to tell you a little bit more about myself and the choices that I made that led me here. So my story starts when I was a little girl of around 13, 14 years of age. I was born and brought up in this very city of Jabalpur. And like any other curious kid, a curious teenager, I had many doubts about how the society functions, how this happens, what the government does, what a collector does, what the municipality does. And I used to ask these questions to my mother. And one day I was reading the newspaper and I came across an IS officer of Goa who had undertaken waste segregation measures in her locality. And I was so intrigued by that, I asked my mother, Mommy, what can we do in our colony? How can we as kids motivate the citizens? Can we buy dustbins, distribute it to the people? Can we as kids organize the people and motivate them? And my mother answered, Beta, you can do all of this and more if you become a collector. The collector has immense power to bring about large scale changes in the society. And that was when it struck me that the civil services is the path that I want to take in the future. Fast forward one year, like every above average student does in India, after 10th, the by default choice of subject was the maths and science stream. So I took maths and science and I started preparing for IIT. One year into the preparation, and I felt that since ultimately I have to go for civil services, what's the point in toiling over and preparing for IIT? And I felt it is not my cup of tea. So I again went to my mother. She talked to some of the teachers, and they made me understand that doing engineering will take, but take up only one extra year of your life. But being from a working class background, a career backup is something that will help you in the long run. I understood that and I continued preparing. Uh, I crossed the 12th with good marks. And then the choice came which college to take up for pursuing engineering. Now again, I had two choices. 
on one hand i was selected for a number of premier institutes that were located in big flashy cities of india on the other hand there was an equally good college but it was in my hometown now most of the students of that age of around 16 17 years of age they want a happening life something that would uh, be uh, relevant to partying and living in hostels and enjoying their life so that was a choice that i made and since my ultimate aim was to go for the civil services i chose to stay at home joined the college that was in my hometown that was equally good as any other premier institute of the country but it gave me the comfort of my home to prepare for civil services so i joined jabalpur engineering college and then while uh, the first year people were making choices for the extra curricular activities and i saw ncc as an opportunity to further develop my personality so i joined the ncc then in the second year i decided to go for the republic day camp that is held in the month of january and that uh, involves cadets from all across the country so i decided to take part in that but there was again a jo uh, a choice my first semester exams were colliding with the dates of the camp and i had to choose whether i have to appear for the semester exams or whether i should take up an exposure opportunity a national level exposure opportunity with the ncc now because of the support of the college i could do both even though i could not take the semester exams then i went to the republic day camp came back and appeared for the first and the third semester exams together so that was again one choice that i had to make fast forward again to the fourth year in the third year i had started serious preparation for the civil services on my own staying at home with my parents so fast forward to the final year when the campus placements came and again i was faced with a choice whether to appear for the campus placements or to continue serious preparation for the civil services now again that working class mindset comes to play and i thought that the campus placements will hardly take a week or 10 days but it will give me a career backup and a confidence that if i do not succeed in the civil services i can always join those companies again so i appeared for the campus placements i got placed in four of the multinational companies that had come that year and i put those on hold and continued preparing for civil services now after graduation when all of my friends had moved to bigger cities they had started earning their salaries they were enjoying their life they were having parties every weekend i was there at my home sitting alone in my room and continuing preparation without knowing where it will head but i had faith in myself and i continued the preparation i took my first attempt right after graduation and got selected as dsp but again there was a choice whether i wanted to stay being a dsp or whether i wanted to move further but since that 13 14 year old girl had decided that she wanted to be a collector she did not give up she made a choice to keep going further and she appeared again she got rank 1 in the next year and became a deputy collector so this was about me my life journey and the choices i made along the way what is life if not a culmination of all the choices we make along we we have to make choices whether small or big but what we want to do is we want to make the best choice but let me tell you something there is no such thing as a perfect choice each choice comes with its own set of pros and cons what is more saying yes to one path of action automatically means saying no to another path of action if you are having a yummy pav bhaji you are automatically giving up the chance to have a yummy dosa if you are pursuing mechanical engineering you are automatically giving up the chance to pursue computer science engineering i'm sure all of us know of the famous poet robert frost and his famous poem the road not taken where he assesses two choices 
and he knows whichever choice he takes he will never be able to make the second choice again and despite that he makes a choice sticks by it and towards the end he says that him making that choice has made all the difference in the world so this is what the art of making choices is all about what you are willing to give up in each moment for something else what is worth giving up in each moment for something else what is this something else worth pursuing these questions are at the core of what we all struggle with and these are the questions i wish to address with through my talk today so now coming to the three step strategy that i talked about i like to call it the kgf method not the famous south indian movie but i wish it were just as popular so the k in kgf stands for knowing knowing what knowing three things number 1 knowing your priorities now i get a lot of students who ask me what to do in a particular situation that is they want me to make a choice for them whether they should pursue engineering or management whether they should stay in india or move abroad for their job whether they should stay in their job or leave it for civil services preparation i can answer all of them but the problem is there is no obvious yes or no answer to these questions it depends on each person's individual priorities i want everybody while making choices to have your own little personal pyramid of priorities what matters to you the most may not matter to another person in the same way does family matter more to you or does your career matter more to you it each person's individual priorities are different now i told you about how i chose my college of course i had the option to go to a national level much more famous much more flashier name much more reputed uh, college uh, uh, outside of jabalpur but i had my priorities straight and therefore it helped me make the right choice similarly until and unless you have your priorities in yourself clear it is very hard that you would make a decision you would make a choice and stick by it and be confident in it so before making any choice always set your priorities straight number 2 in the knowing is the knowing your information now whenever there is a choice at hand always gather as much information and as many perspectives about it as possible and write it down writing it down clears your head of any emotional turmoil that might be going through i always follow this strategy whenever i have to make a choice i always take a pen and a paper draw a line in between and do the old fashioned cost benefit analysis i write the pros on one side and cons on other side and not just the pros and cons add certain columns to it in the pros write down the long term and the short term pros and cons similarly you can also write the regrets associated with each choice what this helps in is clearing out your mind and it gives you a clear written analysis of where do you want to head number 2 is to make your intentions or motivation clear any choice that we make is motivated in one way or the other by our inner intentions sometimes that motivation is very clear for example last night i was motivated by hunger and there was a cheese sandwich right in front of me so i made a choice motivated by hunger to eat that delicious cheese sandwich but sometimes the choice is not so straightforward are you buying that iphone because you would genuinely benefit from it or because you want to impress the people around you are you starting civil services preparation because you are genuinely intrigued by the nature of job and the challenges it brings or you are just jealous of the people who are doing well in their career and you just want to show off that you are also pursuing something ambitious 
if you find yourself being motivated by any ulterior motive take a step back and reassess who you want to be and what choices are you making number 3 of the knowing is know your emotions now i want everybody in the audience to think back to the worst choice they have ever made chances are that when you made that choice you were an emotional wreck you were either filled with anger and in a fit of rage and you abused your boss or you threw that laptop on the table or you were so sad and anxious that you slept the whole night and in the morning and missed that practical and you flunked the exam or you were so anxious about the interview that you totally passed upon the opportunity to appear for the dream job that you always wanted our emotions hijack our sense of logical thinking and reality if you have seen my kon manega karodpati episode and if you remember the question that i did wrong at 25 lakh rupees i would like to tell you my version of that before that at the 12 lakh 50000 question i had wasted all of three of my lifelines and i was overwhelmed with emotions i was overwhelmed with anger that despite knowing the answer at the first lifeline itself i had been saying all along that the answer is something that was actually the answer that was france but i wasted two more lifelines on that and that made me very angry on myself that how could i do that how could i waste my lifelines and that is why when that 25 lakh question came i had studied that i knew the answer to that but because i was overcome with anger i could not think straight and i made the wrong choice so do not let your emotions get the better of you whenever making a choice keep a separation between your emotions and your logic as much as you can tame your emotions that much you can make a better choice for yourself now getting to the g of the kgf method the g stands for gut trusting your gut if you've done everything up till this point but still do not know what to choose it is time to give a certain weightage to that gut feeling that feeling in your stomach that tells you whether something is right or wrong whether you even if though you cannot put a finger on it exactly but should you always trust your gut the simple answer is no so when do we know how to trust our gut and how not to the solution is to take your intuition as just a piece of information in the choice making process and not rely solely on it trust your gut only after you've done everything along the way and despite doing that you cannot find the right choice then see how your gut feels in the bigger picture at the end making choices and trusting your gut is a balancing act between logic and intuition now coming to the third part of the kgf method that is the f the f stands for faith having faith now when everything is said and done when all the logical steps have been taken when you've done the cost benefit analysis when you've written it down when you've set your priorities straight when you've trusted your gut and you've made a choice you what else can you do there's nothing more you can do but have your faith that whatever choice you have made is the best you could have made in that situation surrender yourself and your choice to the universe and leave it up to the universe to make the best out of that choice for you there is no point in second guessing your choices 